welcome to Mind Your Business, a channel where we are in a everybody business. If you don't mind getting in people's business, you're on the right channel. Talking about current topics and gossip. So there's a new episode of There's No Housewives in the South out at the moment and it has been ages since the last episode. I think the last one was a month ago. So I keep saying it. I feel like these guys need to get the consistency together so people know when to expect the show because is it weekly? Is it monthly? Like what's going on here? Well, guys, people, my name is Chrissy Crew. Let's talk about There's No Housewives in the South, a UK reality show that is currently on YouTube. So we see Cherie visit Kid Rock. And, you know, filling her in on her life and, you know, what's been happening with her and Skipper. I did think that this one was interesting because it seemed like this scene was potentially shot when they were still together because she didn't say they split up. She was basically just saying that they were, you know, going through a lot and, you know, she went to go on a family holiday and, you know, he's got a booking for IB so he can't go. She wants the relationship to work. You know, he's not really helping her out. He's coming in late. He's not really, you know, have much, he doesn't have really have much time for her and their child together and stuff like that. Kelly, you know, is friends with her. So she's telling her, she knows Skipper. Um, but, you know, with her girl's hat on, she's like, you know, get rid of him. You basically deserve better. And you've also got to think about setting an example for your daughter, Skylar. So, yeah, that was cool. And then she was talking about how his mum was saying, you know, just allow him to be who he is, essentially. So, essentially, put up or, and shut up, essentially, is what it sounded like was the messaging around that. <laughs> Which made me laugh was the part where she was talking about the cleaners are telling her that she needs to change her furniture because, you know, it's driving them crazy cleaning the glass because her little baby's always got the handprints all over it. I was like, um... If they're cleaners, they're not supposed to tell you what to, what to buy, what furniture's in for your house. You're meant to be just doing your job, which is to clean. And I don't understand how your cleaners are telling you what furniture you should have in your house. I just find that quite ridiculous. We will see Sh- um, Cherie and Vicky in the car, which made me laugh because Vicky was like, what is a masturbation party? And I was like, yeah, exactly. What is that? But apparently Kelly LaRocca is going to be having one. And so Cherie was saying to Vicky, like, you know, she wants her to come along with her. And you've got Vicky still cussing about the nanny, you know, saying that she's basically taking a piss. And she's not really doing her job properly and she keeps cancelling childcare at last minute. Whereas Cherie is saying basically she needs someone. The reason why she keeps her around is because she actually helps keep her house running. So to me, it sounds like she needs a house manager. We also see Mel and Marsh, the sisters. We see them link up with Danny C, who is funny to me. He's like a little madman on a bus that's, in the, that's been made into a studio. That link up happened because of Kayla Rock. She suggested that, that they go and link with him to see what you know they can do on the music front. So they want to work on a house track together what made me laugh is that he did play some track um that he was all hyped up about and was saying yeah this could be the one and really i don't think they were really feeling it i definitely wasn't really feeling it i don't think they were feeling it i think they were like faking it like he was definitely hyping it up a lot which made me laugh i was like yeah he's definitely full of energy this guy but um yeah hopefully he'll send them some more tracks that they can choose from but they did decide they're gonna you know work together on that we also see Shereen meet up with andy um andy Friff, who is the who basically creates the show. She, he's the show creator, but he also does films. Hence why it's on AF Films. That's the channel that it's on. And he was talking about, you know, he's been working on films and stuff like that. She's obviously spilling the beans about her and Skimmer D and saying that they split up. But also she's really gone to, to link with him to get recommendations for a venue because she wants to do a launch of her new brand, um, some hangover capsules that she's been working on. Um, so yeah, she wants to do a launch party in the UK and she's talking about she wants to do it in the in Ibiza, all the party islands essentially. But for the UK, she was talking about, you know, she's bringing all the UK girls it, you know, involved in the show for the launch, um, as well as a female DJ. And he's telling her that, you know, um, he wants, he's been working on a number of films and he wants her to cameo in one of them. Now, later on, we see Mel and Marsh, the sisters, link up with Charlie at a bar or club, it looks like. It looked like a nightclub, kind of. That's what it looked like to me. Because they kept having cuts to the nightclub. So I'm like, this is confusing. A, we can obviously not hear any music because we see copyright, copyright situation. But then they cut to the club bin. I'm like, mm, it's not giving like it's happening at the same time. But anyway, at the club, you've got Charlie, you know, and the girls talking about, you know, men and dating and whatever. Charlie's moaning about men, but also saying that she only likes to date men with money basically that's all she's all on about whereas mel is talking about you know she likes guys that are a bit more thoughtful and attentive and all that kind of stuff so they're having a little chat you've got charlie trying to throw a little bit of shade because um marsh actually says that mel's man gives mel massages and charlie's talking about yes because he's he's a brokey he's a broke ass that's probably why he's giving you massages um himself rather than paying for it (laughs) i was like the shade anyway uh mel basically brings it back to business 
which apparently is what they were meeting for. And I'm like, it's an interesting place to meet girls in a nightclub to talk about business. But okay, fine. If that's the business you're in, then it would make sense. But anyway, um, she brings it back to the business, talking about she wants Charlie to get some girls for her hair and sister's video shoot that's coming up. Charlie agrees, but then she also wants them to do modelling for her brand, a lingerie brand that she's, you know, working on and organising the launch for. And she thinks that they're, you know, they're natural beauties. And, you know, basically, you know, she's had her boy done. So she admits that she's had her boy done, but says that they're, they're natural. And she thinks that they'd be good for the lineup of models. So they agree to, do, to doing that. But then the sisters also let Charlie know that they've invited their friend, which is Mei Ling, Miss Ling, to join them um, and suggested that she could potentially be good for her brand. You know, because she's a pretty girl and, and that she does music and whatnot. Now, the sisters in the confessional, though, they both say that they know of each other. So I'm like, well, if they know of each other, why is everyone acting brand new in this scene? And why does it all go left in this scene? So anyway, Mailing turns up and obviously gets introduced to Charlie. Everything seems fine at first, you know. Charlie's like, oh, you're really pretty. Mailing's like, oh, well, thank you. You know, it all seems like nice teas at first. But things to take a quick turn for the worst. I'm like, oh gosh, here comes the drama. And yeah, it did become very dramatic because it went from, you know, nice teas to, you know, you look pretty and, you know, she's talking about you could actually work for her brand. And then Mailing asks a question, which I don't think is a, a bad question. She just asks about, you know, what is your brand and like, what's your range? I think that's a, you know, a normal question. Unless Mailing was meant to be prepped to come to this, in, to this meeting, knowing that she was meeting Charlie, knowing that she's going to be asked to do this. Um... That's the only reason why I could see why Charlie would get her back up. Otherwise, I don't understand what the problem is. She asks you a normal question. The fact that Maylin asked her, you know, what is your brand and, like, what's the range? It's like that question really annoyed Charlie. So Charlie must have felt like, well, actually, you're coming to meet me, so therefore you should know who I am. She's going on like she's Beyonce. Like, everyone's supposed to know who she is. So I was like, this is really interesting. You know, have you not looked on the gram? You've got Mailing saying, no, she's been busy. And then she's asking her, you know, well, have you modelled for other brands before? Ling saying, well, actually, I've just had loads of offers, you know, but I'm not trying to give myself up to just anybody. You know, it has to be the right brand. So obviously, Charlie's taking that probably an offensive way. Then Mailing talks about how she's, you know, been on holiday. She was in New York, Miami, and Jamaica or something like that. And obviously, the, the sisters are like bigging her up. They're like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Now, Charlie's face switches as soon as she hears that. She's like, oh, what? Is this girl coming to model on me or something? I don't know what she was thinking. But I'm like, how is that triggering you? The fact that she said that she's been on holiday. I don't get that. But anyway, Charlie then says, oh, well, you know what? You know, I would bring you in because you are pretty, but there's a few things that we would need to alter. So, of course, that is shade because it's like you're telling her how she's pretty and you want to bring her hit in, but alter, alter what? What are you a surgeon? What are you going to alter? Are you going to alter her face, her, her, her body? What are you altering? What's going on? So it did sound shady. Miss Ling definitely caught that shade and tells the sisters, you know, your friend's been a bit patronising and... Um, she ain't really with it. The sisters are trying to calm it down because they can see it's about to take a turn for the worse. Um, but it doesn't really work. You know, you've got Charlie interrupting, basically saying, um, you know, the sisters brought you here to talk to me for this business meeting um, and says that, you know, she's she's basically a big brand and, you know, she she don't understand why Mailing has come up with her attitude and she ain't, you know, fucking with her attitude. And she don't really need her anyway because she's actually somebody. So, yeah, they're, them two are going back and forth, essentially. You know, to me, Charlie was trying to boy her off in the sense of, oh, well, you know, I'm big bad to Charlie. Don't you know who I am? Go and Google me, essentially. Mailing's like, well, I don't really care, you know, who you are, essentially. I'm somebody too. And it was definitely a battle of, like, pretty girls. It just, it just seemed a bit ridiculous. But you got Charlie saying, oh, well, I ain't trying to be rude you know, you are pretty and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, my brand is going to be big. And for you to talk about you've just come off of the plane from JA, like no one cares, you know, like who cares, basically. And um, then decides to go and call her a bitch and tell her to calm herself down. Um, and brags on the fact that, you know, she anything she turns her hand to, basically she makes a lot of money and she's trying to bring her into something different instead of her taking her little cheap flights or whatever. I was like, the shade is hilarious, but it's so unnecessary. Like, how's it gone from zero to 100 so quickly over nonsense? Mailing wasn't having that either, so she's pushed back as well to go about, you know, she don't, she don't need her either, and she's pushing back on her, and um, when she called her a bitch, she's called her a hoe, chatting about, I've heard you've been throwing it around, which <laughs> just made me laugh. 
<laughs> she called her a ho 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 and she was doubling down on that you've got Charlie getting vexed Charlie turned to shut the fuck up and that there's nothing ho-ish about her and unless she slept with her baby daddy or her boyfriend then she needs to keep her mouth shut Miss Ling doubles down so Mei Ling doubles down and she's like yep you're a ho basically so Charlie just cussing they're going back and forth and then and then Charlie decides to take her drink and dash it at Mei Ling and Mei Ling looks particularly unimpressed and uh, the sisters look quite surprised about what has just happened. It, what annoys me is the edit because the edit isn't right. I feel like they made them do it again or something or they made them do this scene. Something about it to me just felt not natural. It felt a bit contrived because when she when Charlie got up and dashed a drink on her, it, she threw it on her clothes. I'm like, this is interesting. Whenever I've seen anybody dash a drink, it's never been on their clothes. It's usually in their face. So I felt like, hmm... This dash looks a bit strategic. It was just a hot mess. And I just felt like it was a little bit contrived because of the way she threw the drink. Because if you're really upset, wouldn't you be aiming for the face? Most people aim for the face, right? It's giving a storyline. Anyway, uh, Miss Ling tastes the drink and says it's cheap. And then she decides to pop off. In the confessional, she's saying, basically, you know, if you want a reaction from her, you need to at least make it champagne, which made me laugh. But it did definitely give... Um, contrived it definitely gave edited because it was really weird one minute ling is like going back and forth with her and then she stands up and then the next thing you know she's sitting down getting drink dash at her so i'm like this isn't making any sense you guys have tried to push it together um but i don't know how genuine this whole beef is so my antennas are going off of saying you know giving a storyline i could be wrong but i will keep watching because i will say that the sister's faces did make me think mm, was it a storyline or was it true Anyway, you know, Charlie then tries to go off on the sisters. Now, the sisters made me laugh because their faces were looking like, oh, well, they were asked, what's going on here? Like, this wasn't the plan. Um, and then she's going off, trying to tell Mel to shut the F up. Mel definitely wasn't having it and was telling her to control herself and turned out she was being way over the top, like, what was the beef? She didn't even really know her. And I have to agree with Mel, like, there was no need for the attitude. It felt like they were both giving off attitude. Charlie getting upset because she mentioned that she's gone off to on flights, to me, is ridiculous. And mailing saying that, you know, she's had other brand offers and she wants to make sure she's going, right, going for the right one. Doesn't seem like a bad thing to say to me. Um, and it's a normal question to me to ask, well, what is your brand? Had you not known who you're meeting? Now, if you were prepped and your friends told you you're meeting Charlie, then maybe you could have definitely looked up and been like, okay, if I meet with a brand meeting, let me have a look and see what she's actually got going on. Mel made me laugh because I felt like at one point, like Mel was getting mad with Charlie because Charlie was just getting out of hand, just really trying to cuss at her. And I felt like Mel was about to try and box her. It was funny. <laughs> you know, Mel's telling her sister Marsh to hold back Charlie. I was like, what nonsense is this? You don't make to be friends. Anyway, the following day, the sisters meet up to talk about all the drama. You know, both of them agreeing that it was definitely unnecessary. But they want to bring them back together again because they both, you know, work with the, the two ladies. They want to get them to kind of, you know, focus on business and forget the beef. So we'll see what happens when they do sort that out, the second link up, because... Mel lets it be known that she's invited Charlie along to Mailing's pole dancing class thing that she's got happening. So clearly we'll see how that link up goes next time. Moving on from that, the last scene was the couple's therapy with Skibbidi and um, Cherie, RIP to Skibbidi. And um, she's talking to the therapist, talking about the fact that she found the naked pictures on his phones, you know, the messages that he's been sending, the things that have created issues in their relationship, essentially. Skibbidi is talking about, you know... It's his mate of 12 years. I'm like, do you mean the picture of the naked person is a mate of 12 years? Because if that is, then that's a problem. Or do you mean the person who sent you the picture of the naked person is something of 12 years? I don't know. I wasn't quite sure. So he's talking about that because of that, he doesn't feel like he needs to delete any messages. I thought it was ridiculous when him talking about he's popping around to see some woman at four o'clock in the morning to bring someone cigarettes. Like, Haha, yeah, whatever. Come better with than, than that, please. Please come better than that. What kind of rubbish is that, please? What kind of Jack and Nori is that? Anyway, uh, Skimmedy is also saying that Cherie basically um, messages all of his family, like his mum, his cousins, his brother, about what rubbish he's getting on with. So essentially she's blasting him out to the family, you know, letting him know he's done this, he's done that, he's done this, which is really pissing him off. And for him, he feels like it's just, you know, crossing the line because I take it every time he sees his family, they're probably like hotting, up, hotting him up about it. He gives an example of where, you know, she took a screenshot of some girl that he follows on Instagram and sent it to his mum saying that it was his new girlfriend so he feels like she's just always trying to throw him under the bus with his family and his mum and stuff like that but he made it clear that his mum will always have his back no matter what 
where Cherie was basically saying, you know, it wasn't some girl, you know, you had pics of this girl from way back before them. So it's just a lot of back and forth business going on between the two. It's just like a real hot mess. Then she's talking about, you know, she wants him to be there for her the daughter and how he's not there for his other daughters. Or are you going to be the same in this way? So it was just a lot of toxicity. The therapist was asking her, you know, why she wanted to stay. If essentially, she's not happy. Um, he, she's speaking about she wanted, you know, to have a, a happy family, essentially. But he, he ends up telling her he doesn't want anything to do with her because of the way that she keeps going on and because of the way she keeps outing him to his family. And the fact that she has been messaging women about him. So if he talks to somebody, he says that, you know, they'll, next minute he will see them and they'll be like, oh, your girlfriend messaged me. And it just sounds like a lot of toxic drama. So to me, I was like, yeah, this is a lot. Yeah, the therapist had their work cut out trying to mediate that stuff. It was a hot mess, essentially. But in the end, she just wrapped it up and was just like, right, you know, I think, you know, you're wrong for messaging his family. You're wrong for, you know, your emotional betrayal that you're having with these other connections that you've got. And essentially, you guys can't connect. And in both cases, just call it a day. Was the ending. <laughs> was the ending. And we see it shows Cherie, you know, upset that they, they're breaking up. But I'm like, mm, yeah, it's given highly toxic. It's given just leave it be. Leave it be. So, yes, it ended with them agreeing to, you know, stay separated because they at that point they already separated for a couple of months anyway. Um, so there was no reconciliation going on there. Lots of to and fro him. So I don't blame the therapist for being like, yeah, just quit the day and you want to just come up to my office because I want to give me an idiot. <laughs> That's what I felt like she really wanted to say. But anyway, that was that episode. I'm not sure when episode six is out. I will be keeping an eye. But what do you guys think? Are you actually watching the show? What do you think of the, the mini drama scene that they had? I did feel like it was a bit contrived, like I said. I didn't really feel like it was given fully authentic. I felt like the when Mel was arguing with Charlie, that to me came across kind of authentic. A little bit of the back and forth with Mailing and um, Charlie was all right. I thought, yeah, OK. But the drink throwing situation, it felt like it was they were told to do it again. And who aims at somebody's clothes? Who? We don't do that. If you're going to dash a drink, you dash it in someone's face. Like, you're going to make an impact. But I'm sure Mailing was like, yeah, leave the hair, leave the makeup. I do want, want, want anybody dashing anything in my face. It's probably what happened. I don't know. Now, I must say, this whole Skipper storyline must be difficult for those, you know, the, his loved ones that are watching. Because even Cherie put up a post saying that, you know, she can't believe that the delay in airing has basically lined up. We're, we're nearly being the kind of same time of year that it was happening. So she said that she's heartbroken and she said that, you know, it's, um, it's easy to forget both the good and bad times when you're going through grief but um, by no means was Skipper a bad or a nasty human being but he unfortunately succumbed to the pressures of fame which broke our family is what she said so that she would forever love him and forever wish you know that she could have done more to save him but reality is is what it is so she's talking about you know having the motivation to make sure that you know their little girl has the life that she deserves and, you know, continues her daddy's legacy. So she put R.I.P. D and forever in our hearts. So that's what she put up on that one. It must be hard watching it back. I was thinking that even for, like, his family or, you know, the ones that were being mentioned in that particular clip, it must have been difficult for them to watch that back. But, yeah, R.I.P. to Skipper D. I think it's good that she did put out a statement um, because, obviously, it, the show isn't necessarily flattering for Skipper D at the moment. It definitely looks like he was not putting his family first. So I'm going to actually put a statement out just so people understand that she's not trying to make him look like a terrible human being, but it's what she was going through at the time. But what do you guys think of the show? Let me know your thoughts below. Yes, so thanks for watching that. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, and hit that notification bell so you know when I am uploading some more of people's business. So until then, my nosy people, stay blessed.